Hey, welcome back. Jim from SoberNow.com. I'm going to talk today about trading addictions. Now, obviously, this is not something that anybody does on purpose, but for a lot of us, when we get sober, uh, we go looking for a new shiny distraction, uh, something to take us away from ourselves, change our mood, or uh, just to help us numb the emotions that tend to flood us in early recovery. So for, for some of us, that means uh, trading substances, and this is really insane, but the idea is, okay, I couldn't use that substance safely, but maybe there's another one I can, and the most common example is alcohol. So folks who previously didn't have a problem with drinking decide, okay, I, I can't do opioids anymore, or I can't do stimulants anymore, but maybe it'll be okay if I drink, and my two cents Alcohol is a drug. Has there ever been a drug that you could do safely? Because chances are, no. If you have an addictive personality, an addictive brain like mine, then no, this is just a problem waiting to happen. When we trade substances, we have some level of awareness that we're choosing uh, to use another drug uh, to get us through the day, to help us with stress, to relieve emotional discomfort, whatever it is. Some of the more insidious uh, addiction trades are ones that we don't even realize that we're making. And that happens most often with sex, with love, with new relationships. Um, we all know that there's a, a rush that comes with infatuation and excitement that comes with the, the possibilities of a new relationship. And especially for those of us in addiction recovery, there really uh, is this huge longing, this uh, long-standing desire to have uh, the perfect romantic relationship. Uh, for most of us, we've never had anything that was healthy. We've never had something uh, that was sustainable. And so when we get into recovery, whether it's in a 12-step program or in a rehab or in some other environment uh, where we meet new people, to find that someone's attracted to us, uh, to, to have that attention is, it can be flattering, it can be, um, it can be fun, but what it is first and foremost is a huge distraction from focusing on our recovery and focusing on our own unmet needs. Uh, so the adage that my friends in 12-step programs is, is that we should wait uh, a full year before jumping into a new relationship. And I, I agree with that. Uh, I think it's really an important investment that we make in ourselves. And I, I'm fond of asking people, what is it that you bring to a new relationship if you're in early recovery? Um, you know, we're still looking at the wreckage of your life. We're still looking at uh, how are you going to get through the day without using substances? How are you going to cope and, and adjust your life to really what is a new lifestyle? Uh, so this is obviously not the optimal time uh, to, to enter into something new. Uh, but I get it. It's, it's something that takes us away from ourselves and it's a romantic comedy that is still a, a really prevalent social theme for us. That if you find the right love, if you meet the right partner, everything in your life is just going to magically fall into place. And as insane as that idea is, I understand the appeal. Um, it's very tempting to believe that Mr. Right or Miss Right is going to complete you. Um, but it turns out, no, that only works in, in the movies. Um, there's very few self-help authors that I, that I quote or that I care for their work. But Louise Hayes, uh, many years ago, said, become the kind of person that you want to attract. And I think she was on to something there. When we jump into a new relationship, we often find that there are patterns in the types of people we're attracted to. We tend to date the same person over and over again in different forms with different names and faces. We're attracted to what's familiar. So most of us tend to date the kind of people that raised us, the kind of people that we grew up around. And if you grew up in a healthy, well-adjusted family, that may never be a problem for you at all. It may be great. But if you grew up the way that I and, and most of the folks that I know in recovery did, then what's familiar to you is unhealthy to you. 
And so even though that, that initial rush of infatuation, that the excitement of something new uh, feels really wonderful, it's really just a, a problem waiting to happen in most cases. So I say the most important relationship you're going to have is with yourself and with a higher power. And I, I want you to think about those two relationships as constituting the foundation for all of the relationships that you'll have. Um, by all means, get some new friendships going. Uh, have a sponsor, have a mentor, have a coach, have somebody that's invested not only in helping you develop your new life, but somebody who's going to hold you accountable. Those types of relationships uh, are healthy, they're sustainable, and they add something to your life. Uh, just finding that right romantic partner typically is going to distract you uh, from your program, from uh, the investments that you're making in yourself, and it becomes all about them. And, and I get it. It's fun. It feels good. It's enticing. But it's not time for that. And so I say, first things first, if your sobriety is not intact, I mean, the simple truth is nothing in your life is going to work anyway. If your relationship with you is unhealthy, then chances are the best you have to offer someone is a pretty severely codependent relationship. If you don't have a support system of people in your life, chances are whatever you're trying to build is eventually going to fall apart. So resist the shiny distraction of new relationships. Get rid of the insane idea that one drug was dangerous, but maybe a different one will be okay. Have people in your life that are checking in with you and offering you reality checks. Because whether it's gambling or sex or any other behavioral addiction, um, we're prone to it. It's, it's just the way that we're hardwired. And so during early recovery, we're going to make some strong investments in healthy, manageable living. I get it. It's not the most exciting or sexiest thing ever. But the rewards of doing this, I promise you, uh, that investment pays off a thousandfold. So email me your questions, jim at sobernow.com. Check out my site, sobernow.com, as a resource for recovery and, and maybe fast-tracking some of the investments that you want to make in yourself. Thanks.